There are many, even among those who teach the truth to others, who will not receive the seal of God in their foreheads. They had the light of truth. They knew their master's will. They understood every point of our faith, but they had not corresponding works. These who were so familiar with prophecy and the treasures of divine wisdom should have acted their faith. They should have commanded their households after them that by a well-ordered family they might present to the world the influence of the truth upon the human heart. So here is not just the knowledge of the truth that we have to have, but that's essential to receive the seal of God. But it, and that knowledge must be converted into a practical experience in the life. And the two go hand in hand. And I believe that as the prophetic light comes, if we don't walk in it, it won't be possible for us to perfect the character that we need to perfect because we'll be left behind in darkness if we don't keep step with the light. So what will it lead to when we accept the Holy Spirit's working in our lives? We'll see self-denial amongst us. The blessings of the Christian age were responded to by the first disciples in works of charity and benevolence. The outpouring of the Spirit of God after Christ left his disciples and ascended to heaven led to self-denial and self-sacrifice for the salvation of others. So we will see people putting forth effort to save each other and others outside. Assistance in the work of soul saving. All who consecrate soul, body and spirit to God will be constantly receiving a new endowment of physical and mental power. The inexhaustible supplies of heaven are at their command. Christ gives them the breath of his own spirit, the life of his own life. The Holy Spirit puts forth its highest energies to work in heart and mind. The grace of God enlarges and multiplies their faculties and every perfection of the divine nature comes to their assistance in the work of saving souls. So we'll have a burden for souls when this happens and the Holy Spirit will give us the energy, the strength of heart and mind to know how to reach the people and to put our efforts into that work. In God's vineyard there is earnest work to be done. The third angel's message is to be proclaimed with a loud voice over the land. Every vestige of business that breeds dishonesty, every thread of selfishness is to be swept away by the latter rain. All idolatry is to be consumed. Let every altar be thrown down, save the one that sanctifies the gift and the giver, the cross of Calvary. So here we see, I think this is confirmation in this, in this text, that the work of the latter rain and the loud cry is progressive. And we're going to go more into that in the second presentation. But this is not just a one-off event in great measure at the end. This is something that is going to swell to a loud cry. So it's going to begin at a certain point and it's going to get brighter and brighter, the light. And as God's people keep tread with that light, every thread of selfishness and every breed of dishonesty will be done away with in their experience. Because on the one hand, we seem to have quotes that say, if you're waiting for the latter rain to perfect your character, it won't happen because you have to be perfect before you get it. But at the same time, we see here that the latter rain is going to sweep away every thread of selfishness. So there is a process taking place here. It's not just a one-off fixing event. It's a catching the steady tread of events that God's people will follow this movement. Another thing that the latter rain will do when we receive it is we will understand the movements of the enemy. It says in 6T, peculiar and rapid changes will soon take place and God's people are to be endowed with the Holy Spirit so that with heavenly wisdom they may meet the emergencies of this age and as far as possible counteract the demoralizing movements of the world. If the church is not asleep, if the followers of Christ watch and pray, they may have light to comprehend and appreciate the movements of the enemy. So it's not only given to perfect our characters, to help us give the message, it's also given to help us to understand the movements of the enemy which we know are taking place in Babylon and the Catholic Church, the papacy, what the beast is doing at the end and the mark of the beast and how those things are coming into play. We will understand the workings of the man of sin so that we can meet the emergencies that we're going to face. So what's our part? In James 5, we're told we need to be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So here James, which is, I think is a book written for the 144,000 because it starts with to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. And we know that the 144,000 are made up of the 12 tribes of Israel. Here he says that if we endure, if we have that patience unto the end, that God is going to establish our hearts in this message, in the truth for this time, and that we need to conform our lives to it. 
because the coming of the Lord is very very near and the only thing God is waiting for is for us to come into harmony with the light that he is shining forth at this time and I think that a prophetic message is being given to us so that we can conform our lives to it and then he can pour it out in full measure and we can go home let's pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth that we have as Seventh-day Adventists. We thank you for the precious light that shines upon us in a full blaze as we stand here at the end of the world. As we look back at all the prophetic histories of the Bible, we see, Lord, that you're trying to teach us something about the experience we need to have here at the end of the world in order to be ready for your second coming. We know that you are even at the door and that the signs in the world foretell that the prophecies are fast fulfilling and that we are almost home. Lord, we pray that each of us here, that our hearts would be melted by your Holy Spirit, that we would be filled with your love, your power, your strength, to go forth and have a victorious Christian experience, that we might go home and be with you. We know that it's the desire of your heart to come more than it is for us to go home, Lord. And we, we just pray that you would give us that urgency, that zeal, that first love that each of us had when we first came to a knowledge of this truth. For we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.